Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. The same guy that showed you how the sacred calendar works and how to build a sundial out of an old direct TV satellite dish. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a celestial clock calendar. That's right, based on Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 and the book of Enoch, we figured out a way to use a regular old clock to measure the relative position of the sun, the moon, and the stars. And in this video, I'm going to show you the inspiration, the calculation, as well as the construction so that you could build one for yourself. Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Shadow Man with me. As you can tell, Shadow Man just got a new haircut. But anyway, we were walking along the path just now, uh, coming from Bent Tree. If you guys don't know what a bent tree is, look up a bent tree. I found a bent tree on my property. But anyway, I was coming from that direction when I found this gear, which reminded me of something I thought about working on on the Sabbath day. And that is the clock on our wall is missing the gear. This gear will track the moon. Okay, so... We're going to let this be video one on this series, praise our Father in heaven, who will, if he will, allow us to understand if we're going to pray for this. We ask y'all to pray for me. Hey, y'all. What's in the fight here? Got Chris with me. Hey, y'all. And we are looking at the sundown. Um... Just earlier today, as I was coming from Bent Tree, which is over in that direction, I noticed this gear right here that was laying on the ground. And it reminded me of something I had been working on, and that was um, understanding the relationship between the clocks, the analog clocks that we have on the wall, and the celestial clock. Right. And um, what I've been trying to understand is... Um, was there a gear that was missing? You know, was there a gear that's missing uh, from this clock? Um, and so I prayed about it, asked you guys to pray about it, and we went in there and jumped on it. Um, so it kind of starts up in here where you have the uh, missing gear. And there's the date and the time that we started this. Um, but that date says uh, 2022 at uh, January the 11th at 12:21 uh, this afternoon is when we started this um, with the title "Missing Gear," and it ended up being our clock is our clock is missing a gear. So what we were saying was the relationship between the clock and the lunation and the celestial clock. Right. Man's so-called man's clock, because I'm proposing right now that it's not man's clock at all. But that they altered the clock? Not altered it at all, except for they took this gear. Remember when we started talking about some missing gear? Right. Well, the gear, turns out they took the gear off. Mm -hmm. The initial gear, the first gear was the moon gear. Okay. Right. Let me repeat what I just said there. The first gear on the clock was the moon gear. How, how many times do you have to multiply to go from an hour to a minute? 60. So you go 60, and then you go from a minute to a second. 60. 60. It's 60, 60, 60, 60 from the second to the minute to the hour to the moon or the moon. It's perfect. We give the Father, our Creator, all honor and praise. Chris, you got anything else? Now we just gotta find a clock that'll accept that gear back into it. Oh yeah, that's the yeah, yeah. How do you put the gear back? Yeah. And that's where you guys come in at. I'm electrical, so I don't know. I'm the biker guy, I don't know how to put that gear back, but that's all we gotta do is find us a gear to go from one sixty of the hour. To slow the hour down sixty, so we need a sixtieth of a gear. So we're going sixty, 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 sixty. So we're gonna have the moon. And what that will do is give us something we can put on a watch to go. And look, while we go through the three days of darkness, which is actually turns out to be three and a half years where we can't see the sun, there's no shadows, we don't know what time it is, we can actually have this clock that was on our watch or on our wall 
Okay, what's well, yes, doing it? Telling us where the moon and the sun are. Telling us when it's close. When it's close. You know what I mean? In the three days of darkness. And I don't know when Passover is. Passover around here might go a whole month. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got the whole family with me. Hey y'all. And today we're talking about clocks. We're here in the end times that we're supposed to get an increase in knowledge. Well, how be it, one of the first places that we can see evidence of this is with the clock. The same clock that we have on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I've been searching around the web to see if anybody else has talked about this, what we're going to talk about in this class. Um, like I said before, I could be secondary confirmation, but I've gotten this firsthand, this information about this clock. And I believe today in this class, we're going to learn how to tell time. All right. Um, just as a quick demonstration, we're going to get into more of the detail, but just as a quick demonstration, I brought you guys in just to show you kind of a trick, something we can use maybe even on our science teacher. Mm -hmm. If you would, give me a time of a sunset. Y'all know when sunset is? Time of a sunset? Sun so the time that Journey's chosen is 545. So I'm going to draw a clock on here. And I'm going to draw out 545. Now, with the combination of the sun set data, when the sunset is, and this clock here, I can tell you that this day actually falls right here in wintertime. Okay. You gonna that be, sunset you're, is in winter time. Huh? You're going to be able to prove to us that that's in winter time. Hold on, Daddy. I'm going to prove more than that. It's in winter time. It looks like it's somewhere around February. Our clocks, along with the sunset data, allows us to calculate the months and seasons. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, so let's come all the way back to the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 14, where we learn that our father's timepieces are the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now, that's about all that our Bible offers us as far as how the father's timepieces work. But we do see in the book of Jubilees down in about verse 23 that it is important to understand how our father's sacred calendar works. Else we will lose track of the seasons, the feast days, the Sabbath days and the new moons. Well, it's not too hard to understand how we're in that state now. It is the result of forgetting how our father's sacred calendar works. So let's come over to the book of Enoch, which is the authority on the sacred calendar. Now, don't get this confused with the book of remembrance of Enoch, the Essene book of Haggai. This one is not the same book at all. If you read, this book was written in the 21st century by authors who use the Thummim and the Urim. In other words, they claim to have contacted and interviewed Enoch about the calendar. Well, I have no problem with how they came up with the information to write their book, but I do see contradictions in what they've written and what Enoch wrote himself. So let's come over to the book of Enoch, looking at three particular translations. And I like the 1883 one there myself. Some could call it the Krakatoa translation. But anyway, we'll save that for another video. But for the sake of time, we're going to come all the way down to chapter 72 of the book of Enoch, which begins the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. This is where Uriel, the archangel, spoke to Enoch and told him all about the celestials, including their classes, powers, periods, names, places, progressions, months, everything until the end of time. And you see there in verse two that the first law is that the sun and its lights arrive at the Western gates. In other words, 
the sun sets is the first law of the luminaries. And that's what's important to this understanding. This is what's allowing us to unlock the clock is to understand the first law of the luminaries. And it's that is that the sun sets. So with this information and the sunset data for the entire year, we're able to use the clock to determine our seasons, our months, and days. And in the fourth gate through which the sun with the moon proceeds, in the first part of it, there are 12 open windows from which issues out a flame when they are opened in their proper periods. This is telling us the first day of the first month. But now the next verse says, when the sun rises in heaven, it goes forth through its fourth gate 30 days. And this pattern is going to continue where you see that there are 30, 30, then 31 days in each one of these seasons. 30 days per month or per month and an additional day with some called the seasonal day or the day of remembrance. So when you include these periods along with the sunset data table, you come up with these periods being from March the 20th to about June the 19th to September the 17th to December the 17th. Well, what's interesting is when you put those and map those out on the clock with the time going from 445 as the earliest time of sunset, which would be in December, November time frame, and the latest one being at 656, which would be sometime after June the 19th. What you end up with is the sun making the same pattern as the analemma. And it starts to look like that. This is what your clock would look like if you only looked at it at sunset. You say, well, Coach in the fight, why are you the one to tell us this? Why haven't we learned about this before? Well, to switch gears a little bit, first of all, we have to give our father credit in heaven. This kind of started when a viewer asked the question, how would we be able to understand the celestials without using some type of man-made device? Well, as you can see, the answer turns out to be sunset is on a precision clock. But the reason why we don't understand this is because we don't understand where the sexagesimal system came from. The base 60 system. We attribute it back to the Babylonians who for a lot of us that throws up a red flag. But you have to understand who did the Babylonians get their information from. Who was the first person to start using the 60 second minute and the 60 minute hour? They say that this was developed around 2000 BC. Well, let me show you who else was developed around 2000 BC. That's our forefather Abraham, who not only got a greater understanding of the celestials, even from his birth, which was tied to a celestial event, but also sojourned in Babylon where he taught the king a thing or two even from his youth. So this is obviously who taught him the 60 minute hour and the 60 second minute. Well, it turns out 60 revolutions of the hour hand equals a month. Exactly. 29.54 days repeating. So not only is our clock predicting the sunsets, but it's also predicting the new moons as long as they are calculated and calibrated correctly. So let's talk about that. When are they to be calibrated? The gist of what we're saying is that if you set your clock correctly, it will not only tell you the sunsets throughout the year, 
but it'll tell you the seasons, your months, and your days simply by knowing the time. You just have to set it correctly. Well, it turns out that our clocks are now set to the equinox. March the 20th at sunset is the time in which our clocks are calibrated. That atomic clock that's programming our automatic clocks for us is set precisely to 6 p.m. on March the 20th, which is the exact time of the sunset on that day. So that's why the clocks on the wall only predict the day is because they are set to the sun time, which is March the 20th, the date of the equinox. It gives us the sun data and it gives us the star data as well. The sun data being that it's set to sunset. Like Enoch said, the first law is sunset. And as part of that first law, the sun and the light arrive at the western gates of heaven. It's telling us that there's gates on the east and on the west. Don't get confused. But it's telling us that this light arrives in the West. Well, that's what's represented by this date here. That's the star date. So you have the sun being represented by the six o'clock at sunset. But you could do that any day to bring the stars into it. You have to set it on March the 20th, which is the spring equinox. That's the way our clocks are set now. So they really only make good predictions of sunset seasons, days, but not months. Unless, of course, you're talking about the Gregorian months, but even those don't fall precisely. If you were to go around the calendar, just looking at the 30, 30 and 31 day patterns, you end up with something similar to this where the dates fall around the 19th to 18th of each of the month. But there's one thing to note in here really quickly, and that's how this date doesn't correspond with daylight savings time. If your clock shows daylight savings time, then you will actually be saying seven o'clock instead of six o'clock. And it'll actually not make any sense. Well, when you look very closely, you'll see that they actually changed the time 10 days earlier or around a week earlier. March the 13th is when they changed the time. So when you're tracking it along the days, it appears as though it's going to hit six o'clock at some time. But then all of a sudden on March the 13th, it changes from being 1755 or 555 p.m to 6.56 p.m. So it appears to be disjointed. And to me, it seems as though it was done intentionally. Why would you change the time one week before it's supposed to be calibrated? But anyway, so the time has changed. And I also believe that the calibration date is misaligned because when we come back to the book of Enoch down in verse 11, it says, and in the fourth gate through which the sun with the moon proceeds. So this is saying that it's supposed to be with the moon and knowing how these gates and portals work. We have the representation of the sun and the stars at the gates, but we still have to wait on the moon to come through the gate before we get a new month. And I believe that's what Enoch is telling us here is that the first day of the first month is the first new moon after the spring equinox. That's when our clock is supposed to be calibrated. And if we do so, our clocks then will not only tell us the seasons and the days, but it would also tell us the months. And if you wanted the clock to actually show you the months, like I said, 60 revolutions of the hour hand will equal 29.54 days. So all you had to do was flip these gears in here to make your hour hand to show you the months. But we'll work on that video when we get that accomplished. All right, so simply by knowing 
sunset. We go out and we have our clocks calibrated. But when our clock is properly calibrated, when we see the sun set at 645, we know that we're either in September or in February. Right. Now, like I said, I hesitated to call this a trick. So let's go in and let's show how this works. How this is not actually magic, but just time, how time works. Okay. About to find out how the clock works. So we broke apart several of these clocks to see how they work. And this little funny colored gear in here is a 48 to 8 gear. It has 48 teeth on one side and 8 in the middle. Well, if you flip that around, your clocks will start to tell you the months. It will predict the new moon for you. Mm -hmm. your, your, your clock would actually become a moon clock that will predict the moon, new moons for you, and you would just recalibrate it on the days of remembrance. Every day of remembrance, you would line it back up to show you a new moon. Mm -hmm. And then it will tell you the new moons throughout the, the season, even predicting the day of remembrance, and all you do is just recalibrate it. Okay. But that one we're still working on how to reverse that gear in there. Okay. So this is so the design will be something similar to this. This is a um, the early stages of the design. You will have the main times on here: four forty-eight, five fifty, and six fifty-six. Right. Um, I thought that was real interesting to have you have four, four, five, five, and six, six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you'll have the representation of the seasons up here. Like we said, there's winter, um, then spring, summer, and fall. Right. Or the seasons up here. And then we can take that picture and actually create us a watch out of it. Right. The more detailed design will look more like this. Mm -hmm. But you have September and March right around the equinox. And then you have a gap here on both sides. And then you have two months on the sides here. And then followed by another gap. And then two months. So it's symmetry right. about the clock as well. And, you know, that's how we know all of this is divine. Because there's no way, you know, any human could have made all of this up. Right. So, somebody asked you, do you know how to tell time? You might want to be a little slower in the answer. Mm -hmm. might... <laughs> what kind of time? Or else, what time is it? Yeah, Yeah. what time, yeah. <laughs> um, it's amazing how much this clock can, can do for us once we understand this. And so we give all credit to our Father for al allowing us to understand it. Maybe this is the reason in the last days that there will be no time because nobody understands it. <laughs> Or maybe we realize what time we're supposed to be on and we throw away the other time. We go ahead and switch those gears out. Right. Uh, show them the gear ratio that we got to switch. Right there, back to the lunar clock. Um, from the drive gear, you're getting a 12 that's going into a 48 to an 8 that's going into a 60. And what that does for us, it changes uh, the um, clocks that we have on our walls to show us minutes and hours. But if we can reverse that gear, where it's going from a 12 to 8 to a 48 to a 60, then it'll show us hours and months, hours and months. So By slowing it down. It'll slow it down. Um, slow everything down. But there is lies the project, and it's going to be somewhere in these gears over here. And you guys... Um Say a prayer for Coach as him and Christian receive information as to how to get this design together because we will hopefully one day be able to present it into the tea shop so people will be able to purchase this design and um, have their own watch. All right, so we're looking at a schematic of a clock. Right. So let's tell them how we did it. Okay. So how we did it was we took the movement and we had our two movements like this. And we put them, how we're going to put them is put them up from front to back. And so this is a zoomed in version of that. So front to back with this blue part being the second hand, yellow being the minute hand, and orange being the hour hand. 
And so how we did it was we paired off the minute hand and the second hand so that they are not above the hour hand anymore. And then we took our coupling and attached it to the second hand of the driven clock. And so that makes it so that the driver clock drives the driven clock with its hour hand, slowing it down. By connecting the hour hand of the male clock movement to the female movement. Right. Right. So basically we had to circumcise the working clock movement mm -hmm. and add a female component to the other clock movement. Right, to act as a coupler. We are able to marry the two components up together. Right. Making them into one clock. One calendar. One clock calendar. You want to tell them what it is? Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've used two different clocks, well, three in this case, to make this clock, and we've used the movements, the part that moves, out of two different clocks so that we could slow down the second hand so that it shows an hour. And that in turn slows down the minute hand so that it shows days. It slows down the hour hand so that it shows months. Okay. So is it, it, it doesn't appear that it's working. Is it working? You want to tell them why it doesn't appear that it's working? Well, the reason why it doesn't appear that way is since the hands are moving so slow, like the hour hand, the shortest one, it's going to take a whole month to even move from one spot to the next, to move a twelfth of a rotation. How long does it take to go all the way around the clock? That's going to take a whole year. So, where well, you have an hour hand, where it's measuring an hour, what it's measuring is months, what each of those 12 tick marks is saying there, and it takes a year for one revolution. Right. And the minute hand, it's moved, it's been 12 hours since we set it, so it's moved one tick, and it's going to take 59 more to make a whole revolution, so that's another 29 and a half days. Hey, y'all, Coach in the fight, you got Chris with me. Hey, y'all. So we got the clock set about uh, 2,200 hours last night on February the 22nd of the year 2022. And here we are 12 hours later, about 12 hours later, and we see the movement, right? Right. So we're verifying that it is working. It is working. You can get, if you um, get over top of it directly, they can see how much the minute hand moved over the last 12 hours. Right. Like 160th, right? Right. So we verified that it is working. So now we're going to set it to the correct time. That is correct. All right. So looks like that's set to the correct time there. What do you think, Chris? Yep. It was right there at it. It took us a minute to actually get it set up. We're looking at from the top down, of course, the second hand was represent the hours now so it's looking at about nine o'clock or nine a.m and then the next hand down which you would call the minute hand is pointing to the time of the month which is which day chris the 21st on the 21st day of the month there where you see december the 19th would actually be the 22nd day of the month that will be the sabbath day so we have just a little time before we get to uh, that date. And then the hour hand is pointing to what date, Chris? That's pointing to February 23rd. Hey, y'all. Coach in the fight here, looking at the world's first celestial clock. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to build it. Now, since this is only a construction class, I want to spare you all of the math that it takes to do what we're doing. But basically what you need to understand is that we're piggybacking two clocks putting two clocks together to make a celestial clock. So the first thing we have to do is start off with two clocks. So these are the clocks Walmart have. We have digital clocks, digital clocks, and we have the regular quartz clocks, big face clocks. 
but today we're looking at the basic clock and this is the one that we want and I ended up with this simple black clock that looks like this I got two of them and we're going to put two of them together to make one celestial calendar so the first thing we have to do to make this calendar is locate the movement on the back of the clock we're going to have to disassemble the movement on the back of the clock. We're going to have to cut a hole in the housing of the clock so that we can access the second hand part of the movement outside of the housing. Then we could use the hour hand to make a coupling between the two clocks. All right, so let's go ahead and cut the hole out. All right, so we have our hole cut in the back of our clock body. It used to look like this, but now we have the hole cut in one of them. Like I said, it takes two clocks to make one celestial calendar. So one of them has to get a hole cut in it. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach what used to be the hour hand. With this little coupling on the back, Rex is going to glue it to this pin here, which is the second hand for the celestial clock. This will be the second hand of the celestial clock. Like I said, it will be now measuring hours. It will have this coupling attached to it so that we can attach it to the modified driver clock piggybacking off of the half a hertz, turning it into a yearly calendar. All right, so let's make it happen. All right, so we got a hole cut in the box. And you can see what it's doing is it's giving us access to the second hand. If we get it just right, you can actually see it ticking away. That drive gear in the middle is actually the gear for the second hand. So in order to make the celestial clock, we have to take the second hand from the celestial calendar using the hour hand as a coupling to mate up with the hour hand from the other clock. So let's do that. Well, one of the first things we have to do is remove these little pins here. We have to have the surface flat for the glue to match up. And these little clips are getting in the way. They're unnecessary anyway, so we're going to cut them out. All right, so let's try to find out a way to cut these out without actually destroying it. What I'm doing, all I'm doing is using the hole to keep me from punching through the other side. So I have it right in a position to where when my knife goes through, it's actually blocked by this that keeps me from cutting all the way through the washer. Praise the Lord. And all three is out. Now, I have a flat surface to glue this onto. So now I have to prepare this piece. This is the old hour hand. Now I got to turn it into a coupler. Okay, so this is my coupling now. It's going to allow me to mate or piggyback two clocks. Going from the hour hand of one clock to the second hand of another clock. Now I just need to get that on there glued. And centered. Looks like the centering part is actually going to be the fun part. May need some magic for this one, y'all. All right, now this is the trickiest part of this whole operation, I believe. So we're going to put three dobs of glue right here, here, and here, really small. Maybe three dobs might have been too much. And poof, just like that. So we have it glued on here now. You see it's kind of spinning true. And that's important because that's what's going to allow us to mate up with the other clock. This is the piggyback piece. Taking this hour hand piece, cutting it down, and gluing it on to the piece that looks like this. The next time I do it, I might actually consider leaving the handle on it so that I can get it centered properly easier. The only problem then is cutting it off. So that it looks like that. 
So now we can put our clock back together. We have the receiver clock here. This is the second hand from the receiver clock. It goes back into place here. Everything's still working right. Making sure that we have proper clearances. Put it back together. Now we have a calendar. And take the battery out. So now we have to modify the surfaces or the output of the drive clock so that they will match up together like that. And essentially they're going to end up being piggybacked like that. In the meantime, we'll leave the battery in here so we can verify that it is ticking right. Put a left it like that too. All right, on to the next step. All right, so here we have the drive clock. Now, it looks very similar. It's actually not been modified at all yet. The only modification that we have to do to it is cutting down the pins so that our hour hand can mate up with the coupling that we made for the receiver or the calendar. Not only do you have this extra hand, this is the minute hand. This is sticking up above the hour hand, which is right here. But you also have this metal pin in the middle that has to be cut down. All we want from this hand is the hour hand. But these other two indicator hands are in the way, so let's cut them out. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a line as showing me where the minute hand has to be cut away at. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So we take off the components here. Be careful with these guts and stuff because, of course, this piece right here is a little bit more delicate than we'd like. The main pieces that we're interested in is the hour hand, which is here. That's the one we're trying to save. That's going to be our main hand for our new clock. Kind of matches up like that. So we want to keep that part. It is these other two hands that are getting in the way. There's the minute hand that's about that far too long. We can cut it out. Put me a little washer in here so that I can get the spacing right. Is that much of it that has to go away? So then let me get me a tool to cut it with. Alright, I was afraid it was spinning as I was cutting it, but evidently it was actually cutting on off of there. So there's our modified minute hand just cut down. And really all we need to do is clean it up without damaging the gear itself. We yeah, might have to get those burrs off of it. And that's worked. So all we needed was for the minute, for the hour hand to protrude above the minute hand and we see we're good. The minute hand has been cut down lower, and then when we put the hour hand on it, we got that much room above it. But you see, we still here have the metal piece above it, so now we're going to have to cut that part off. 
We don't need any of this arm here anymore. Normally, the only reason why it sticks up is to receive the second hand and give us an indication of the second hand. But because we're not using the second hand in the drive clock and that part is in the way, we're just going to go ahead and cut it off. About halfway. So now, when we put it into the clock, it's not sticking up anymore. Mm -hmm. We're doing all of this so that when we put the hour hand back on it, there's no interference. The second hand is not sticking up, nor is the minute hand sticking up above this here, which was from which is where we're using the mating surface from this. You can imagine if that pin was still sticking up, it will be coming into contact with that pin there. So that's why we just cut it off. All right. So now to put it back together and mate them together. All right, so once we got our modifications or our modified gears back in there, we put it back into the box. One of the benefits to having two clocks is when and if one of the gear systems decides to fail on you, you actually have a uh, backup. You just switch the gears around. From uh, what I understand, it's that part in the, there that fails on us. So our Celestia clock comes with a backup. All right, so you see our two modified pieces. You have... The one where we've exposed the second hand with a coupling that allows us to piggyback off of the first clock, which has been modified so that the hour hand protrudes above every other pin. All right, so we're ready to make the two clocks up together. So we have the drive clock and the receiver calendar. And so we put the two together. And they're actually together now. The only thing that I don't like about it is the space between the two. I kind of wish we could have cut down the hour hand a little more to take away that space. But then we would have lost the quick connect. Because of that piece that's in there and that mating surface there remaining the same as it did from the factory, we have a quick connect. And a quick disconnect. So now what do we do about the wobble? Alright, so now as far as the spacing goes, we see that one piece of cardboard makes a good washer between the two movements. And we should specify now that these are two separate movements. The bottom one is a clock movement. It's still counting hours. But the top one is a calendar movement. It's actually calculating years. But because they're all ran off of one battery, from the clock movement, we can actually take these two pieces together and consider it one celestial calendar. Now, of course, that's going to create spacing issues on the back of the clock because you have two movements back there instead of one. And you can see how we took care of it, basically had the housing of another clock to create the spacing for this clock. So basically, this is three clocks put together because of the spacing issues that are created when you put two clocks together. But in this video, we're going to try to do it in two clocks instead of three. All right, now, before we can completely assemble the clock, we have to get a, create a face for it, for all of the numbers to make sense. You can imagine how much complication is going into this, and so I'm not going to spend much time explaining it in this portion of the video at all. We'll just use it to set the clock. But now, in order to cut this out to fit the clock or the calendar, we're going to use the face of the clock as a cutout template. Don't use the glass to cut it out because the glass is actually larger than the face of the clock itself, so it's not going to fit. 
By the way, we're going to be making these spaces available at our tea shop, and that is www.thebombandtheblend.com. All right, so once you get your clock made, and instead of creating your own face, you can just go over there and have it printed out, or probably even purchase the whole clock from there if you want one pre-assembled. But anyway, let's see what it looks like. So that's our calendar. This is our clock face. It looks like it's going to fit in there almost perfectly. we got a little bit of edges to clean up. All right, so let's go ahead and let's put the face on the front of the clock. It doesn't fit quite a perfect, but that's all right. Put just a little bit of glue around it. Not too much. No glue is cheap. All right, so we're going to put it in there best we can. Like I said, this is a the first time, so we expect the mistakes and the errors. Everything's not going to work out just right. And plus, we got some wrinkles in here. But there is the face of our clock. So now. One of the first things I'm going to have to damage to get the hole in is the place for a movement to push through. But this is actually a very important part of the clock. See how it's saying 0%? Yeah. That's because when your second hand or the hand that indicates the hour is pointing towards the new moon, the hand would be at 0%. There will be 0% of the moon illuminated, but as the hand moves around or as time moves throughout the month, even facing straight down will be 100% illuminated or the full moon. But I'm going to have to damage that to get this through. So now we put our calendar back in through our hole. Locking tabs. And there you have it. All right. Now in order to set the clock. Now the first hand that goes on is the hour hand. And it actually tells us the time of the year. So what day is today? Today is February the 27th. So we'll put this here. The hour hand points exactly to February the 27th. This hour hand is the hand that indicates the celestials or the stars or our relative position to the stars. Then you have the minute hand, which it points to the relative position of the moon. Not the sun, but the moon. The minute hand will tell us the day of the month. There you have the Sabbath day that we just passed on the 22nd day of the month. And now we're up to the 25th day of the sacred month. So the moon hand is pointing somewhere around there. All right. Then you have the hour hand. Now, this clock doesn't have a minute hand or a second hand, so you're going to have to judge your hour based on this hand here. What time is it? It is 12.53. So there's 12 there. So now you have the clock set. Oh, I shouldn't call it a clock. Now you have the calendar set with the shortest hand going around once per 12 hours, the minute hand going around once per month, and the hour hand going around once per year. Right. All right, so let's put it together. All right, with this particular clock, it's really easy to put it back together. The only problem is it's the big protrusion here. We'll deal with that next. All right, so we just got a crude method of hanging it, but this will give us a way to mount it on the wall. So let's go do that. So there you have it, the world's first celestial calendar, or I should say battery-powered celestial calendar. A clock that has been changed over to a calendar using the timing of the moon as well as the other information given from the scripture. You have the sun hand, the moon hand, and the star hand all represented on one calendar. So seems pretty simple to set to me. Just waiting until the equinox to see if you have equal days and nights, then letting it run until the new moon where you hold the hour hand down while you move the minute hand up to the new moon position. Let it run from there. Or if you'd like on today, 
yeah you can take it back to the day that you're on and then set the minute hand to the day that you're on and then let it run from there yeah all right so there you have it mm-hmm that's the calendar clock appreciate you spending this time with us along this journey through time and hope you learned a lot on your way you guys can look for productions that we may have on these clocks yeah the clocks are available as we speak on the bomb and the blend um, just look for yearly celestial calendar clock or you can just rewind the video and learn how to make one yourself yeah mm-hmm right if you have any questions or any revelations on it please add them to the comment section of this video and we'll be happy to answer your questions and help with your concerns and I say this journey has been fascinating it's been a little over a week and a half now working on this clock well on materializing it that is mm -hmm. yeah I think when I first came in on it um, I remember saying the prayer and going to um, the subscribers and asking that you know that they would say a prayer for us as you began to construct the clock you and Christian and uh, for me um, I think it, it was amazing because um, like you said to go from um, nothing to actual actually having a clock where everything that we need to know is just there a clock a calendar everything we need to know is there I think one of the um, most amazing things for me is going past the frustration the times where you know getting up at two and three o'clock in the morning and sitting seeing you sitting here in front of the computer and just looking at numbers you know that reminded me of the scene from the matrix um was all the dedication that you and christian um had with it and i think the most substantial thing that i got out of it was when you would come to me and you would say that how everything has to line up with scripture and when it wasn't lining up you would go back and start scr um, crunching the numbers and then I would hear you say okay that's it that made you got it it lined up with scripture so um, I think that that was the most amazing part for me how you didn't stop if it didn't line up for script with scripture you kept going in and crunching the numbers until it did so I thought that was just um, dedication and, and faith in the scriptures that the scripture was right every time. The scripture is right every time. But now you remember when we first started off, we were stripping gears. You remember that, Chris? Mm hmm. We were trying to slow it down by removing some of the gears so it hit on the gears less times per second. Actually, going in and removing the teeth out of the gears. Right. Um, trying to slow it down. But that had proved um, that had proved not to work because we hadn't yet understood how the um, clock was actually functioning. So that turned out to be another learning lesson. So it was divine inspiration that caused us to marry up the clocks instead of destroying them. Actually, put two together. Right. And that turned out to be the solution. Yeah, I think you guys stayed up one night. Um, I know it was pretty late. I had woke up. Well, I had went to sleep, woke up, went to sleep, woke up, and you guys were still in here. And when I um, got up the next morning, um, there was a clock on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that easy. <laughs> <laughs> like the fairies did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely say it's been at least um, two to three weeks with nothing but clock, 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 and more clock. So, you know, I get my kitchen table back, I get my husband back, and I get my son back. Yeah, and then you're going to get a house full of clocks. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen clocks on the wall. Y'all listen to the sound. <laughs> you don't hear the clicking of clocks right now. That may change over the course of the next few videos or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Oh, and also they get coach back. More videos. Get to do other stuff besides learning how to cl make a clock. Yeah. Mm hmm. Imagine. <laughs> there will definitely be more videos to come on this one. I can't imagine. Including the next level where we take it to the 5,880 <laughs> years. Mm -hmm. Might have to take a little bit of a break before going on to that one though. Yeah, it's just multiples of 60. Alright. And with that, I guess you say like and subscribe, put your comments down below, hit the bell icon so you don't miss these videos that Coach will be putting up soon. Pray for us. Yeah, shalom. Shalom. Peace and safety into your home.